next we need to determine the ultimate moment from the soffit this is the step where we check if the moment resistance of the sections is greater than the loading attained on it before that we will need to calculate the ultimate moment acting on the member. These are the UDL acting on the member as obtained from the previous example. The self weight is 10.9 kN per meter. The GK and QK is 7.2 and 12 kN per meter respectively. The section has an effective span of 12 meters. As we are calculating the ultimate moment, the factor of safety of 1.35 and 1.5 are being used. The self weight of the member is a part of the permanent load. Therefore, the partial factor of safety for the self weight will be 1.35. The total UDL adding on the member will be 42.4 as computed from this equation and the ultimate moment MUED will be determined from equations WL square per 8 to obtain 763.2 kN meter this represents the looks acting on the member now we need to calculate the total moment resistance of the member itself we are talking about the bending at the soffit of the beam. In order to determine the moment, you will need to multiply the compressive force by the concrete times its lever arm, minus FP1 times its lever arm, and minus FP2 times its lever arm. The compressive force by the flange is calculated in the previous calculation steps. As the neutral axis of bending force within the flange of the member, the weight do not contribute any compressive force. Based on the tensile strength developed in the tendon of each layer, the value has been adopted. Next, you need to determine the lever arm, which is determined as the distance of the centroid of the stress block as well as the centroid of the steel reinforcement bar to the soffit of the beam. These two numbers can be obtained from the previous calculation steps, which are this. As its distance from the soffit of the beam has been calculated. Now we need to generate this number. To obtain this number, you will need to use the height of the beam sections, which is 750 mm, minus half height of the stress block here, which is lambda x divided by 2. The remaining will be the ZC. The X is calculated as 26.8 earlier on, and the lambda will be 0 0.8. Substitute the value into the equation here, you get this value. These two represent the equations for you to compute these two numbers. Now, your moment due to different parts of the pre-stressed member, it will be calculated by the force times its lever arm. As the force in the tendon is acting in the opposite directions of the concrete in compression, there will be negative moment. You can take this negative value times the lever arm, you get this. The summations of all the ultimate moment will give you 903.2 kN meter. This represents the total moment resistance of the member generated by the tendon itself. Now you compare the moment resistance with the moment load. The moment resistance now is greater than the moment load. 
that means these sections will be safe at the ultimate limit state under flexural bending. In this case, no additional reinforcement bar will be required. If you find your ultimate resistance of the sections is smaller than the moment load, additional non pre-stressing reinforcement bar will be required. You will need to recompute the tensile stress generated in the steel and the tendon and try to work out the new moment resistance of the member. You will have to add the non precessing reinforcement bar until you have MU resistance greater than MUED. There is one more thing that I need to highlight here. Based on the calculated result here, the MU resistance is greater than MUED. Theoretically, you do not need to provide any additional reinforcement bar in this section as the tendon itself alone is able to generate sufficient strength to resist the ultimate moment acting on the member. However, this question is an extension from the previous example. If we look at the previous example, particularly example 3 in the Magnell diagram, this section is worked on basis of the partial pre-stressing. That means in the calculations of the stress limit for the bottom beam at the service state, tensile stress is allowed which is limited by negative FCTM. Although the section now has checked pass as a stress limit in the serviceability limit state, it is also checked pass at the ultimate moment for the ultimate limit state. As the design for the serviceability limit state is on the basis of the partial pre-stressing, there will be tensile stress at the bottom of the member, at the mid-span, and at the service state. There is also tensile stress on top of the member at the support, at the service state. You will require additional non pre-stressing reinforcement bar in the tension zone in order to control the cracking. This is a part of the requirement for partial pre-stressing. To make it simple, even though the ultimate design moment resistance here is greater than the ultimate load, where at the ultimate limit state, the non pre-stressing reinforcement bar is not required. However, when we develop the Magnell diagram, the P and E is proposed on the basis of partial pre-stressing. That means at the serviceability limit state, the tensile stress cannot be fully eliminated. Therefore, you will need to provide additional reinforcement bar in order to control the propagations of the tensile cracks. This is a part of the requirement for the partial pre-stressing.